We've got a, a guest in studio here. He's a, he's a uh, land development expert, Steve Bona. He's with the Homestead Partners. And uh, Steve, welcome to the studio today. Good morning, Andy and Chris. Thanks for having me. <laughs> hey, buddy. We just we thought we'd bring you in because you're 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 moving a lot of dirt right now. You're uh, like Chris and I have said. We noticed uh, there's a lot of infill developments. And why don't you talk a little bit about what's happening out there in the development you know environment for those that own acreage? Well, uh, we're busy. In good locations, we're very busy, and acreage in the first and second ring suburbs, uh, it's coming back faster, and it never truly went away. I think the price has just declined somewhat, you know, starting five years ago, but these good locations and good school districts are are Mm -hmm. great, and, um, you know, I think the property owner, the first thing that they need to do if they have um, questions about what their property is, they need to contact someone like us. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's hard to know what you can do based on what everyone's telling you. So, right. or you can go to the city and have conversations with them, but you need some guidance when you do that. So, mm-hmm. it's probably the be- the best place to start. But yeah, there's definitely some traction. Yeah, back in the days, that's where I used to start when I was actually I called myself a groundhog. I think a lot of those guys did chasing dirt and talking to farmers right. and knocking on doors. Yep. And- We'd go to the city and say, hey, who's uh, recently stopped in and asked about zoning? You know, and, and yep. sometimes they tell you, sometimes they don't. But, yeah, that's uh, it's a nice place to start, I think, because then they'll put you in line with the, the developer, too, that like yourself, that, that has projects already happening. And that's usually, right. you know, action attracts action. And so, what? So okay, so I own a piece of property. I've got a couple acres. I think it might be for development. I start to the city. The city says, yeah, you can put up to uh, five units per, two units per acre on my property. What does that mean? That means that they need to take the next step. And if they're interested in selling, two units per acre means they have five acres, they're going to get 10 lots. Mm -hmm. And if they're in a good location, they're going to get a good price. Okay. And so it kind of starts, it's the economics that the developer that we at Homestead Partners would lead them through. So we would say, well, here's what your land costs. Well, first you would start at your home price and you kind of work backwards into your development costs and city costs. And then you end up on a land price, and you discuss that land price and okay. try to make it fit with the seller. So, so obviously, you as a developer, though, have to take a look at what's the retail um, you know, price that the consumer would absorb. That's right. So you know, if the magic number is $100,000, for an example, and you work your way backwards, like you're saying with the cost, I mean, what can some, I mean, I know this is all over the board, but what are you seeing for people getting per acre for developments nowadays? I mean, I'm sure everything from the very little to a lot, but what, can you give us an example? Yeah, you know, the interesting part about that is that if you end up, location is so important right now. We're in this recovery. We hope we're in recovery. We believe that we are. Um, but if you end up being in that third ring suburb, mm-hmm. the reality is that your property isn't worth very much in some locations mm-hmm. because the development cost to put that lot, that single family lot in the ground are probably going to be, you know, $50,000 per lot anyway. So, Jeez. and in a lot of those locations, as you know, those lot prices can be lower than that. There's bank owned inventory and they've driven the prices down. Mm -hmm. And some, some lots in far out locations are, you know, less than $20,000. So how are you guys competing against the bank owned lots that are out there? In the good locations, they're finally getting uh, absorbed. Mm -hmm. So in these Western suburbs where we uh, do most of our business, you know, that color was from Plymouth. Plymouth is a fantastic city. They pull some of the most, uh, you know, they're, I think they're pulling the second most permits in the Twin Cities right yep. now next to Blaine. Yep. And uh, all the way down through the southwest um, suburbs is where we uh, specifically well, try it, to it, do our business. It's like a whole different world, Steve. I mean, I've been over there. We're driving around, and there's all these beautiful two stories being built, and That's they're right. pushing dirt. And it's it's like it's a different economy. <laughs> you know, it's got its own little bubble over there. And that's the old location, location, location is such a key part of that, I believe. Yeah, when you're talking about uh, first ring and second ring, Let's just kind of let's state what those really are. So your first ring suburbs are? I would suggest that they're uh, outside the belt. So Maple Grove, when, when you're talking western suburbs, you'd be talking Maple Grove, uh, Plymouth, Minnetonka, Eden Prairie. And second ring suburbs might be the next one out. So when you're talking Eden Prairie, it might be Chanhassen. Okay. And then Chaska after yep. that. And third uh, ring, you're just talking that's more rural. It is, but, you know, locations like Chaska, since I suggested that, that is a location that uh, is good, and there is a demand for Chaska right now. And so, you know, but when you're up in Maple Grove and you go to Rogers and then you go to Otsego or Monticello after that, 
it's a little different in that area of the city. So it depends on where you are in the metro area. Okay. What Now, why don't you go ahead and do a little bragging here? I want to see, where, you guys are in how many different communities right now? You guys have more developments going, I think, than most guys. What, well, we're, we're busy. We have, uh, we're, we've got five different projects that we're working on right now. Great. And uh, a bunch more in the works. So Good. we've got our, you know, like you said, we're knocking on doors. We're talking to people. Most of the most of the inquiries that we get about land or most of the deals that we find are by the people that we know. So our acquaintances, people like you are calling us and they say, hey, I've got somebody that's got a 10 acre property and mm-hmm. they're interested in doing something. Um, so, yeah, we have. We well, have and you guys have projects. good partners, too, don't you? Absolutely. I mean, I think that's a key to your success is you've surrounded yourself with people that uh, builders that are top notch builders that deliver quality products and, and they have that consistent stream of customers coming as well. So as a seller, we don't have to worry about can this guy perform as a developer for us because he's got that team behind him. Is that would you say that's part of your success, too? Yeah, it's one of the most important parts of it. It's so, kind of like the real estate radio hour. <laughs> no, seriously, you guys have a great right? network of people. Same, you bet. Same thing. Yeah. Keep, makes, makes us uh, all look smarter.